Good evening, y'all. I'm Dr. Jedida Eisler, a National Geographic Explorer and an observational astrophysicist. We're here in Terrebonne, Oregon. Over my shoulder is Monkey Face, where earlier today, climbers were getting high so they could see the views of this beautiful Central Oregon region. Tomorrow, we're getting even higher, 35,000 feet to view the total solar eclipse. We cannot wait, legit super excited. But before that, tonight we're here at this special Airbnb listing, live from it actually, to talk to our winners, who you'll meet in just a second. We're so excited. Can I wait to talk to you, to them, to all the peoples about the solar eclipse? So without further ado, let's get into this special listing and see who we've got on the stage. In the meantime, make sure you ask some questions, act like you're here at the table. So here, are our awesome winners. This would be Maya. Hi. This would be Rupert. Hello. And it's safe to say y'all are pretty excited, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk more to them in a second and hear formally about them. And this is my bud, Babak. We're going to be hanging out, telling you all kinds of science facts, nerding out, doing all the things. But it's really important that we just get into it right now. So let's get this party started. Hi, Babak. So thank you, Jadaida. Tell us who you are and all about you. Well, I'm Babak Tafrishi, mm -hmm. photographer for National Geographic, specialized in night sky imaging. Like, like night? Mm -hmm. Night, everything at night. Perfect. And I'm a founder of a program called The World at Night. Nice. Again. Nice. So I'm a fan of astronomy, eclipse chasers since 95. So this would be my 13th eclipse. And 13? 13. He's been to 13 <laughs> eclipses. <laughs> That's so yes, cool. but the first one on India. So that's, that's quite wow. different from that altitude. But um, let's just start by introducing yeah. our guests. Yeah. So our lovely guests are from Southern California. Mm -hmm. They're the great winner of Airbnb Night Ad Contest. I think from over 50,000 entries. Yeah, it's a bunch of people. And we yes. know many, many of you applied. So, wow. so how excited. Wonderful essay <laughs> yeah. on the connection to universe. <laughs> <laughs> How excited are y'all to be here tonight? I am so excited. This is a once in a lifetime experience. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Now, I, I don't know about you, but I had planned to watch Solar Eclipse, partly the astrophysics thing kind of yeah. a thing, but also just because it's cool. Yeah. But did you ever imagine you would be watching a solar eclipse from 35,000 feet? No. I, I would not have thought it was possible. <laughs> right? Right? I, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even, it wasn't even something I was going to dream about because I didn't know it was a possibility. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Rupert? What are you thinking? Uh, who came up with this idea? <laughs> I, mean, I am absolutely just flabbergasted and just honored to, to be chosen, to be here, and, and, and flattered and just, uh, and just overwhelmed. Yeah. It's just an overwhelming experience. Yeah. It really has been. It is. It so is. on our backdrop, uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned earlier, yeah. but it's the Smith Rock State Park. So all these natural rock formation, yeah. part of the rock. We are not inside, but we are facing a beautiful panoramic view of this it's state park. Beautiful. Which will be in the shadow of the moon tomorrow by 10, around 10 in the morning. And you would know, because isn't part of the work you do to take images of the sky from really scenic places? Yes, so my work is connection between earth and the sky. I like to show the night sky with foreground that is familiar to people so they can connect with science yeah. through this. So that's a way of science communication. That's true. And you know, it's interesting. I feel like you two are representing both yourselves and also the sort of many thousands, probably millions of people that are going to be watching this eclipse, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's this thing that brings us together. It's the thing that brought the four of us here to sit and talk. And so we certainly want to talk about that. We want y'all to ask us about that. Um, but let's dig into some science yeah, because... Ask you something about the um, eclipse, how yeah. rare they are. Yeah. Uh, and what is really the science information that we are going to get from, what, why is it so important to astronomers? Yeah, are so they really rare? They, you know, solar, total solar eclipses are actually pretty rare. They're only a couple every few years. Um, you expect to see some solar eclipses every, every year because it's, you know, sort of the sun and the moon orbiting, but total solar eclipses are special, right? Because it's that special moment where the moon's orbit aligns with our orbit aligns with the sun's orbit, and you get this perfect straight line shot. It's really amazing. So that's actually very rare. And it's also very rare to have it be in a place that people can see, right? So 70% of our planet is made of water. So yeah, exactly. the ocean gets to see quite a bit of them and it's awesome. But to have this special moment where we can see it and not just we sitting here in Oregon, beautiful central Oregon, by the way, but also 
a large swath of the U.S. will get to see it. Yeah. So it's a special coast thing. Coast to coast. So coast it takes coast. about one and a half hour for the shadow of the moon to start from Oregon coast all the way to South Carolina mm -hmm. at, at the crazy speed of 2,500 miles to 1,500 yeah. miles. So this is four to six times the speed of sound. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's, it's trucking. That's why we cannot catch, uh, we cannot chase the shadow on our plane tomorrow. Yeah. The shadow right. just goes over <laughs> yeah. us. Um, but uh, speaking of eclipses being rare, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in fact, if we, we just sit on one point and wait for the solar eclipses, um, how Oh, you'll be it waiting takes? a long time. It's 330 years. Yeah, there, there are places in the U.S., two of them in particular, that haven't seen a total solar eclipse in a thousand years. Wow. Yeah, that's why, because uh, the path is very small. It's very narrow. It's quite long, but very narrow, less than 100 miles usually. For this one, it's about 60 to 70 miles. Yeah. So it's easy to miss a total solar eclipse. Right. Not a partial one, but total one. Yeah. That's why it's called once in a lifetime experience, yeah. Yeah. unless you yeah. travel yeah. and yeah. chase yeah. eclipses. <laughs> and, and technically, I mean, the last time we've had a total solar eclipse over the US was just under 100 years ago. So I mean, if you eat your vitamins, eat your veggies, <laughs> you know, work out real well, you could see more than one. So we'll start now, yeah. Maya, you and me. We're gonna start <laughs> now, <laughs> meet you in 100 years, we'll see another one. Oh, that was, another coast to coast yeah i know because the previous one in the u.s was 1979 yes, yes i was yes, yes. i was one year old i was so. <laughs> i was not here yet oh yeah not so yet. but it, still you know it's four decades of no eclipse no yeah. total eclipse we're such a large country yeah. so that's why this eclipse is so important to people of this country also important to many others coming from international uh nations because uh it's a it's an eclipse during the summer. It's yeah. uh, pretty long, two minutes. Yeah. It could be up to seven, but even two minutes is quite interesting. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't get the people excited. They are not getting a seven-minute eclipse. <laughs> yeah, there's it's, not, you're getting about 160 seconds of glorious. Even two minutes to most people who observe the eclipse for the first time, it looks like two seconds. It's quick. So don't plan too much for the eclipse. You know, people plan for all sorts of imaging with six cameras, and when it happens, yeah. they're just there like a caveman with mouth open <laughs> they can't do anything because something Cave people well yeah because something really deep inside us are affected by the eclipse absolutely 100 percent right like i want to ask maya and rupert if you all had any questions about the eclipse in particular because we don't want to just spout facts at you we want to know if you were thinking were there, was there anything about the eclipse that you wanted to know well my question was answered how rare is it yeah it's pretty rare yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is well, it happens every one and a half year, but it's rare to see it from your location. Yeah. yeah. But one thing that, that uh, you said which, uh, which really resonated with me was to not get carried away with trying to take photos of it, yeah. but yeah. just to live it. Yeah. Because, you know, if you just live it, if you just look at it with your own two eyes, through the glasses, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that probably will resonate and, yeah. and be the most memorable memorable experience you'll have yeah yeah highly recommended not just spending the whole time through yeah. your you know looking at your cell phone yeah um i'm gonna put the camera down tomorrow yeah i think you know it's, it's an interesting thing right that like we live in such a connected time that it seems like you just want to snap it you, yeah. you gotta get it you gotta do it but there's so much about the fact that Mother Nature is putting on a show for us, and we should be there to watch yeah. it. And there will be plenty of people. You've got us covered, right? You're going to get pl plenty of pictures for us. So yes, I try be, to. Yeah. Well, I'm going to station two cameras down here and two in the plane. So we will have um, all sorts of images, close-up views and wide field views as the shadow approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, but another thing I'd like to mention to you, especially to Maya, the, the current Young generation is also called the eclipse generation in the U.S. because in the next 35 years, we are going to have five total solar eclipses in the U.S. Wow. So this, uh, this century is quite eclipse-oriented. Oh, cool. I want to see him too. I don't know why he didn't include me in the younger generation. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later. But yeah. We made a plan earlier that we're going to watch the eclipse together. <laughs> Definitely. So the next one in 2024. Yeah, April. I might just and then 2044. <laughs> So, 20, so wait, 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 2024 is going to happen in the Northeast U.S. So you're from okay. Boston. So that's you right. can just go visit your family. There will yes. be one over the Northeastern United Maine, States. So Vermont, that's the oh, next one you'll yeah. want to see is in April 20, 
2024, don't miss it. But yeah, there are many coming behind it. Yeah. So if you can't make this one tomorrow, you really should. Uh, you can make the one in 2024. It's definitely not going to be in a jet. <laughs> no, so. So what is the one most important science part about the eclipse that astronomers are chasing it so well, widely? I mean, we, we chase anything in the sky we just indiscriminately. It's awesome. I mean, black holes are the coolest thing, to be clear. That's my job. But um, there are many things that are still left to know by studying the eclipse. My favorite fact, actually, is that we proved Einstein's theory of general relativity using an eclipse, which I think is exactly. super cool. Whoa. Yeah, in 1918, Einstein was out talking about all the things with general relativity, and people were like, push ah, that's not true. And so what they did was they needed, you either need something very massive or you need highly precise instruments. So what they had was something very massive in the sun, and they had the moon crossing in front of it. And basically what happened was there was a star cluster behind the eclipse, and general relativity argues that very massive things bend space-time. And so there is a precise uh, measurement of how much light, starlight which would have been bent if general relativity were true, as opposed to Newton's law. And they, the eclipse happened, everybody was in shock and awe, and then they did the results and they found out general relativity was right. A uh, star was born. And interesting is that That's it was found out it? by a British astronomer uh -huh. for a German scientist during the peak of the war. Yeah. So that shows how eclipse or science in general can bring people together and break the political boundaries. That's really cool too. And yeah. Dida, what you said there, I think I understood. I think I actually understood about seventy-five percent of that. So yes. I'm really proud of myself. Yes. I mean, <laughs> on an evening out here like this, that's a high number. But now, I mean, that was that's my favorite sort of like historical science. But there is still ongoing science that we're learning right now, right? There's stuff you can learn about the sun, so you can only see the corona when the when well with some blocking technology. In this case, we have the moon to do it for us. So you can yeah. see, learn things about the corona and why it's a million times hotter than the sun's surface. We still don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. We constantly see the outer corona by satellites, but not the inner ones. So that's why it's also important to astronomers to capture the inner corona and then complete it by the satellite view from the outer corona. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's even uh, valuable for amateur astronomers to take precise images and share it with scientists to complete this view of the sun atmosphere. Absolutely. Wow, really? So yeah. an amateur photographer or astronomer could, could actually contribute yes. to yeah. Yeah. the overall knowledge of And in fact, many are. There are these studies that are going on. Folks are trying to understand the ionosphere and how like one of the outer layers of our atmosphere works. It helps us bounce radio waves across the globe. Hmm. So like these are still questions that you could today decide. Oh, I want I guess you could too, Rupert. It's totally. <laughs> um, you can you could decide I want to participate. I want to know this thing and it would be a place for you. So there is active ongoing science in, in addition to there being awe and and sort of the wonderment of the universe. It, there is actual science. That's yeah. Yeah, but also, happens. speaking about eclipses, one part for general public about uh, the fascinating uh, and dramatic change of light that we see. So if all part of nature reacts to eclipse during totality, in partial, you don't see much, you don't see any changes. Mm -hmm. But in a total eclipse, especially the last two minutes before totality, the, the change of light is not linear. It just drops right. all of a sudden. So it surprised everybody. Yeah. Because you look around and almost find, uh, of course, the shadows are very sharp mm -hmm. when we get close to totality. But that last two minutes really surprisingly change everything. And you see the birds are flying back to the nest. Really? Mosquitoes are flying. Mm -hmm. uh, ants are coming out. And then absolute silence during totality unless people are screaming and <laughs> you see this uh, emotional reaction. So like the whole reaction. Earth ecosystem is yeah. reacting just from yeah, those moments. Yeah, even the moments. temperature change, yeah. uh, 5 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, we have change of temperature uh -huh. during totality. Uh, you, you feel the wind and breeze, there's some clouds forming sometimes due, due to totality, so a lot of changes happening. That's so up crazy. here where, it's, where, it, where we have a lot, not a lot of light pollution yeah. and the moon actually completely blocks out the sun, mm -hmm. it will be totally dark yeah, and very all the stars question. will come out in the sky. Not all the stars. You are, yeah, so part of the reason you see the stars is because the sun is behind the earth and so you, right. it's, it's come like dark, nighttime. Uh -huh. okay. That's not, you're not gonna get quite that same effect. Uh -huh. But 
I just want to remind us where we are. We're here in Terrebon, Oregon, mm -hmm. hanging out with Rupert and Maya here who have won the Nat Geo and Airbnb Solar Eclipse Prize. <laughs> We're still very excited about that. Um, let me just get some questions from online. So one of the questions from Gabe is, why can't the solar eclipse be seen from everywhere? That's a great question. And it has to do with the fact that you're really standing in the moon's shadow. And while the moon it can cast a shadow on the Earth based on its location from the sun and where the Earth's location from it, that shadow size depends on the location. So it's, it's like when you stand in the shadow of a building, right? Like where the sun is determines where that shadow is. And so you don't get a full coverage. There are just certain regions based on the actual orbits and how far they are from one another that allow you to see them. So it's, it's sadly not there for everybody, but it's, it's basically sitting in the moon's shadow. Now, one thing that is science that I think, I mean, that was science too. <laughs> one thing that's, that's also interesting in terms of science is the fact that this time, like astronomically, speaking is a special time to see the eclipse. So we're we're about the sun is about 400 times from the 400 times larger than the moon and the moon is about 400 times closer. So that's why the moon right now can actually block the sun. That's such a coincidence. Otherwise we couldn't see We couldn't see it. And in total fact, eclipse like if this, you so. went 15,000 years like back in time, it wasn't a total solar eclipse. And if you go 15,000 years in front, uh, forward in time, it wouldn't be a solar eclipse because the moon is just slightly moving out every year from the earth and so at some point 600 million years from now i think it is actually um it's 14,000 miles a year uh we won't even get total yeah. shoulder eclipses it's really 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 special so uh let's get to another question and i guess this is for you and i babak um when how old were we the first time we thought we wanted to be a scientist oh i was um 13 when i got my first astronomy book and I realized this is my passion. I didn't become a scientist. I studied physics and continued as a science journalist. So I became a bridge between scientists yeah. and general public. Yeah. Yeah. So I became a bridge too in a different way. So I got my bachelor's and master's degrees in physics. I studied astronomy and I do astrophysics now. And I also do stuff like this because I'm really interested in talking to y'all about cool things in space. Black holes next time. Promise. <laughs> Um, so we've got a lot of footage and, you know, one of the things we talked about was science, but we also want to talk about the work you do and the images you do because the other sure. very important thing about the, the solar eclipse is it brings folks together. So maybe you could walk us through some of the images you've seen yeah, and then we could talk about did just a few, just a few from the 13 well, you've seen. 20 or so. <laughs> so why don't you walk us through some of your images? Sure, sure. I, I'd like to just answer Rupert's question on, um, the eclipse, you, because you, you ask a very good question. I'm going to show it on one of the pictures later on. Oh, great, okay. But let's first start with this one. Uh, this was the first major eclipse I saw. Yeah, it was in 1999, mm -hmm. and uh, it's exactly 18 years ago. Um, 18, Where were you? Well, it was in Iran, mm -hmm. um, the diamond ring with the clouds uh, around it. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so every 18 years, the eclipse returns. That's called Saros. We know it from Babylonian time, mm -hmm. 2,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the same eclipse coming now. Okay. So the last one was in Europe, in uh, Iran, Middle East. Mm -hmm. But now this one is mainly in the U.S., only in the U.S. In oh, fact. Before you show us the next one, could you refresh your air? Your your screen so we could uh, make sure we get all of that. And while we're doing that, let me just remind y'all that tomorrow we'll be having live coverage of the eclipse from Nat Geo and Airbnb. So really wanna make sure you get to see that. And while he's doing that, let me answer, uh, or are you ready? You good? No. Okay, let me answer another question. So a lot of y'all are asking about safety. We're definitely gonna have an extended conversation about safety, but here's the view. Number one, do not look directly at the sun. We're not gonna do that. No looking directly at the sun. You need to have solar eclipse glasses. Your sunglasses do not count. So please don't just look at the sun with your sunglasses. So what you want to do, the only moment where it's okay to actually look at the sun or look at the to total solar eclipse is during totality and be very careful in that moment. But best case scenario is always wear your solar eclipse glasses. Go back, what do you got? Whoa. So here is when uh, the eclipse is not total, but it, it's actually a total eclipse, but the moon is not large enough 
to, to show the corona, to cover the complete sun. That's called the annular eclipse. Got it. I captured this one in Spain, 2005. Whoa, the sequence wow. of total that is solar amazing. eclipses, it's a sequence of seven images right before, a couple of minutes before totality and a couple of minutes after, including the corona during the mid total that eclipse. That is an amazing picture. That is. Some people are just chasing eclipses much more than me. Like <laughs> this person on board the cruise ship is just showing all the eclipses from 1970s to now that he have chased in all continents. Oh, so the right. eclipses took me to all continents too, to seven wow. of them, but not all of them were successful. Okay. <laughs> so this one in Ant on Antarctica That's in 2003 right. shows me and a group of 50, 60,000 <laughs> penguins. The penguins. So the, the king penguins are here. And we what did the just, penguins do when the eclipse happened? It's a very good question. <laughs> did happen. Actually, that was the <laughs> most memorable part of the trip mm -hmm. because uh, I was documenting this for a TV series and I was hoping to show how the pe penguins are reacting. Uh -huh. They showed zero reaction. <laughs> <laughs> So of all the animals I have looked during totality, they were uh -huh. the only one with zero reactions. That's <laughs> so funny. Just so that's they're just um, used to total darkness down there. Right, they're <laughs> like, this is not a thing. <laughs> so the eclipses also took me to Central American Amazonia. This is with a group of people in Panama. Uh, and we were trying to tell them what is going to happen in the next couple of days with the eclipse coming. Uh, this one was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that, that was the longest total solar eclipse in 21st century. We saw it for 6 minutes, 40 seconds. 6 minutes and 40, 40 seconds. Oh it was long enough to read a newspaper article. But you would wish. never <laughs> do that during an eclipse, yeah. Babak. Come yeah, on. That's true. The same moment with uh, a telescope on board the ship. And then in 2013, I went to northern Kenya, three days on a very rough road to Lake Turkana in northern side, which is also known as the cradle of humankind. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, just oh, half an hour no. before eclipse, we had a sandstorm. Oh, no. It was completely clear sky, but oh. all, all of a sudden sandstorm. So that was the only thing I saw, a little bit of partial eclipse oh, at man. sunset. Well, let me, so let me happened, ask you so. this. That, that seems sad. We'll, we'll get above the clouds this time. Yes. Um, but Beck, let me ask you this question, and, and it's going to be our sort of last little segment before uh, we'll have to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the questions is, if, since you've seen so many, do you feel like they've changed you? And maybe you could talk specifically about um, how they have functioned to bring people together in your journeys. Oh, Give yes, definitely. Uh, first, they have changed me because uh, every time you see it, as I said, something very deep inside you reacts. Yeah. And you feel you have received so much positive energy yeah. from the eclipse that you are energized for the next few years. <laughs> so it's good to see an eclipse every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's but, advice for the ages. Yeah. But <laughs> another thing is that you think of yourself as somebody who can control all your emotions, but mm. forget about that during the eclipse. Yeah. I have seen uh, during my last eclipse in Indonesia, um, my hand was shaking after 11 eclipses on my 12, my hand was shaking. I couldn't hold the camera yeah. during the totality. Wow. I decided to do handheld photography, wow. so do I that. don't recommend that. Yeah, don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. Because it's such an emotional experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, today cameras are sensitive enough to capture the image handheld during totality. Yeah. Back to your question, it's as bright as the full moon, even a slightly brighter because the corona of the sun is brighter than the full moon. So you only see a few stars, it's like a deep twilight. So it's possible to do handheld photography, but I recommend yeah. to use yeah. a tripod for sure. Yeah. So the one one of the things I do want to make sure we get the Safety. get to yeah yes. get to is I was telling you before about using solar eclipse glasses. It's something you want to make sure you have. We've got them covered. Y'all are good. You're <laughs> totally solid. We got you covered. Um, but you want to make sure you have something for safety. Uh, nothing other than approved total solar eclipse glasses will work. Um, the one thing that I want to make sure we get to, though, beyond you wearing your glasses, is that you can use pinhole projectors if you want to do that. Um, when people are, when you're together, if you've got a large group of people and you want to view it together, you can do that. If you want to see some of the shadow bands, you can put down paper and you'll see those in, in the in the background, but please don't look directly at the sun. 
Also, take this opportunity to get to know someone you don't know. This is a magical moment that allow you to get to know some people that you might not know, to get to know people you know a little bit better. It brings people together. It's, a, it's part of the work that I do. I'm an astrophysicist. I kind of like science communication. I'm also very passionate about making sure that anyone who's interested even a little bit in STEM or STEAM <laughs> or STEAM labs or 3D printing um, gets an opportunity to do it. So make sure that you're taking this opportunity to get together with other people, to engage folks that you might not otherwise, and maybe we could see a little bit of change in us. At the same time, we're seeing the nature do the thing. So please do be sure. Yeah, I'd like to emphasize on the point of safety. If you're using a, a telescope or a telephoto lens, remember the filter should be definitely in front, not in the eyepiece. So uh, the, one of the most dangerous things that some people try is to wear one of the eclipse glasses and look through a binocular without protection in front. Mm -hmm. So that, that doesn't work. The protection should be in front on top of the binocular or a telescope. And during totality, we don't need any eclipse glasses. We don't need any filter. In fact, if you have a filter for photography, you need to remove it five seconds, 10 seconds before totality and get ready for it. With the filter, you're not going to capture anything of the solar corona. And that's the most tricky part yeah. because if you forget that with all the emotional yeah. reactions, yeah. Uh, you will miss the image yeah. during totality. So uh, it's so dark that we don't need that filter and it's totally safe. Uh, at the moment, there's many concerns on media that eclipse is going to damage the eyes. That's true, but that shouldn't prevent us from going out because right. some people might just sit in indoor, indoor and watch uh, watch it through a TV. That's right. not a good idea. If you're on the totality path, you should experience it yourself. And Babak, what, when is when do you put the glasses back on again? As soon as you start seeing yeah. the, yes. the sun again, uh, after the on. diamond ring. Yeah. So that's after the, the effect ring. that the first light of the sun is coming out, or the last rays of the sun before totality. Uh -huh. So that's called the diamond ring. I have a picture of that to show you, in fact. Um, here is the diamond uh, ring. Right. It looks like a diamond ring. Yes, it <laughs> is. So the diamond the ring that Babak is talking about are called Bailey's beads. And that is an effect where the sunlight comes through the valleys and mountains on the moon. And that's what we see. So that's what you're looking what? at when you see Bailey's beads. Really? Yeah, so the Absolutely. diamond ring is in the breaking. Mountains. After the diamond ring, if you have a pair of binoculars, you can clearly see it or even with the eyes you'll definitely see it in fact for those people who are on the edge of the path that's the place to see very strong bailey's beads for a long time like oh. the cities of san louis um, or the kansas city these are places that people can actually see the bailey's beads for a long time okay. anywhere near the edge so it's not always the best to go to the center line that's best to see the longest totality right, right. but not some of the side phenomena right exactly like the there's bailey's a lot beads. to see with the eclipse and just to be clear, if you don't have solar eclipse glasses, then you can do projection. So like Babek said, you don't have to not see the eclipse because you don't have the glasses. Do it in projection. Google pinhole projector and it'll show you how to do it. It's two pieces of paper. One has a hole in it. Project it on the other and you can see the eclipse. Don't miss out because you don't have glasses. Yeah, I'd like to also mention under the trees, like this picture here, uh, you see a lot of crescent sun during... We don't have a tree on the plane, but... On your next eclipse, you can try it. So for anybody, <laughs> some, <laughs> I just got some, that. I somewhere on I'm the planet. What am so I looking at here? between the leaves, we have a lot of pinhole cameras oh. because there are gaps between the leaves of the trees. So okay. each one of these gaps make one picture of the sun. On a typical day, we don't really care about this because they're all circle. But during the eclipse, they become all crescent sun, and it's quite That's photogenic. That's and beautiful. it's a very safe way of viewing yeah. it. That's beautiful. That is such a unique way of looking and photographing the eclipse. Yeah, you can also have really your own cool. cardboard and make yeah. some pins on it. You can also yeah. even what make I remember, your name box on it. over my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so these are, this has been an incredible time here in Terrebonne, Oregon, in your special Airbnb. No. We're live from your bedroom for the night. And you were saying that one of the things you're most excited about is just to stare out at the sky tonight, yeah. right? the clear roof. Oh so. my goodness. It's yeah. going to be amazing. I kind of wish. With the Milky Way. Yeah, yes. right? I kind of wish yes. I could just like sit right on the corner and just hang out watching with you. Oh, you um, can hang out as long as you want. I will actually and I'll see you tomorrow. How about right. that? Uh, this has been really awesome. Are there any closing questions y'all have for us? 
boy, can you take anything? <laughs> I think all my questions have been answered. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's been that's really, cool. really informative. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. We're so, so glad to hear it. So it's been a blast here. Thank you, Nat Geo and Airbnb. We really enjoy this time together. Um, we cannot wait to see you tomorrow. We'll be at 35,000 feet. I mean, wait, 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 wait. Let me back up. Have y'all had a good time tonight? <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's we have incredible. too. We hope y'all viewing have had a great time too. Tomorrow, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have just a little more fun because we'll be at 35,000 feet watching the eclipse while we're doing that, right? I know, every time I say it, I'm like, what is happening? Uh, <laughs> you should watch the live Nat Geo and Airbnb show uh, where Terry Burtz and Kara Santa Maria will be hosting. You might even get a cameo from us too. So don't miss it. Join us tomorrow to see that show. We've had a great time here in Terrapin, Oregon. Thanks Airbnb, thanks Nat Geo, thanks Bob Beck, thanks, thanks Rupert, thanks Maya. This thanks, has been Airbnb. awesome. Right? <laughs> Good night.